Hill, thank you for joining me on the Spirit Farm podcast today. It is yeah. always good to have you on the farm. <laughs> it's good to be here. Bring that smile, bring that wisdom, bring that joy. Try to. Try <laughs> to do my best. Always bring a joy. You always do. Okay, so the reason why I thought it was pivotal to have this conversation now, we're leading up to the Christmas season, mm-hmm. 2019. Uh, but Christmas or not, there's this term that you give to God that yeah. I think, well, that was given to God, but it's a term that you cling to yeah. um, all the time in your life, but particularly it's relevant at Christmas time yes. uh, because of the historical context and because a lot of people struggle with this time of year. It's joyful yeah. on the one hand, but it can be very difficult, sad, painful, or chaotic yeah. on the other hand. And so, please, talk about the the way that you think of Jesus uh, and where that comes from. Yes. So, um, I'm glad that you brought up this being a difficult time, because I know I think about my friends and family that have lost people this year, and there's empty chairs at the holiday season, and that can be a real challenge. So, I I appreciate your tenderness. You're always so sensitive to acknowledge that. The name came when my mom got sick. So about a decade ago, 11 years, my mom got sick with pancreatic cancer, and she was sick for three months, and then she passed away. As she got closer to the end of her life, she started referring to God in a new way. Like this, it went from like, she was raised Catholic. It went from this like God to like this very intimate relationship she had with him. And she started saying things like, I'm holding Jesus's hand. I don't know what where I'm going, I'm just trusting him, which was not common for my mom to no. say. And then she said a couple times to me, the Prince of Peace. And I, I, I'd never heard her refer to, to God in that way. And I, I know where Prince of Peace comes from, but I'd never um, heard it before. Well, and at the same time, she is in the final stages of pancreatic cancer. They're trying things. There's chaos, yeah. there's sadness. It came fourth stage four, it came on really fast. Yeah. She was 55 years old. Yep. So it was like she was just clinging to peace. And I remember above the, the sofa, remember where she, yeah, where the she was? Yeah, peace sign. Yeah, she laid down on the couch a lot of the time. We still have that. And she had this gold piece. It's just spelled out peace that hung right above where she would rest her head. Yeah, I kind of think it was. <laughs> like a Christmas thing right. that just didn't get put away. Right. But Because it was July. It, yeah. <laughs> but we, we ran with it. Yeah. And it was gold and sparkly. And, and so significant. And so, uh, yeah, I have that in our house year-round too. But um, I think back to my stage of life. I was 26 when she got sick. And she was like my best friend, my world. I talked to her five times a day. The thought of not having that covering yeah. produced a ton of anxiety for me. Yeah. So that's partly why I clung to this name, Prince of Peace, yeah. was because, and it was true, the year that followed her death was, I was pretty consumed with anxiety. Yeah. Of what do I do without my sounding board? What do I do without my person? And I was a newly married to you, and I yeah. just was pretty lost in that name always settled me. That yeah. name always brought me back to like my home base. Yeah. So the Prince of Peace became my special and sacred name. Yeah. And it comes from Isaiah 9. Yeah. Yes. And there's prophecy about Jesus coming. Yes. And yes. It's, it's something along the lines of... I have it. I'm going to read it. Oh, read it, please. Read it. Okay. So Isaiah 9... Six, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. His, he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. Hmm. So it's prophesying about the coming of Jesus, which we celebrate at Christmas time. Yep. But this was hundreds of years prior. Yeah, so Isaiah talked about this 700 years before it ever came to fruition. Gives these names and then nothing. Nothing. Just like my mom gave me this sweet name. And then I had, you know, years of 
trauma and anxiety, but I had this name, this name that was given to me that I could cling to. Mm. So I think there's this promise that, you know, Isaiah gives to these people and they have to wait. They have to wait. And they're waiting and they don't know. And I think in their heads, this government being overthrown and they have right. this concept of what this is going to look like. Right. And it looks totally different. Right. Jesus comes in such a unique way. He right. doesn't come and overthrow the government the way that they think it will be overthrown. Well, I mean, I think that they're, they're hopeful for so long, and maybe it ebbs and flows and people kind of yeah. forget, but then they totally miss it when he shows up. Yeah. So when Jesus shows up, born as a baby, there's these prophesy, the prophecies, you know, checking the box yep. as being fulfilled, but people don't get it. And because, in fact, he doesn't overthrow Caesar and the Roman government and kind of yeah. turn over the tables and all that, they're like, this can't be the guy. Like, this must not be the guy. And so they, they, they mistake him or they miss him when he comes because they were expecting something different. Yeah, even his disciples missed him. Yeah. I think that's really interesting to me because sometimes I think I miss Jesus. I miss what's happening because I'm so focused on what I think, how I think things should turn out, that I miss what God's doing. What God's doing. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's true for our lives. I think what we walked through in the last couple years with regards to our church that we were at and um, being released from that call, I really thought and wanted it to look different. Yeah. And when it didn't, it's it's not that God's not in it. It's that my humanness wants it to look a certain yeah. way. But that doesn't mean necessarily that that's outside of what God is doing. Yeah. Well, and, and interesting little side note, I'm not sure if you've thought about that, but in this moment, peace is another word for reconciliation. Mm. And we thought that reconciliation would come in one way, but it came in a different way. Yep. And we thought that the outcome would go this way, yeah. but it's gone a different way. And it's leading us where we thought, oh, well, you know, let's fix this, let's get back to this. It's actually leading us in a direction that is enabling us, enabling us to do stuff like this yeah. and potentially reach a lot more people. I mean, there's who, who knows all that's going to happen as a result, yeah. but it's different than what we thought. Definitely <laughs> different. Yeah, I began praying for reconciliation and desiring reconciliation in the midst of this trauma, really wanting, like, something different to come. And I was so surprised with where our reconciliation led us. And, yeah. and that led us to a really beautiful moment with your ex-wife, which was just incredible. So yeah. I, I think when I look back at the last couple of years and what we've been walking through, peace is where I know Jesus is. Peace is what leads those moments. Mm. And that's where he is. That's where I know, okay, this is where he's guiding me. It's always marked by yeah. peace. And there's still some answers that we don't have. Correct. There's still things that we're always. waiting on and looking forward to yeah. and maybe that we're missing, even in this moment. How, how would you kind of conclude or want to encourage our friends who are in the middle of something hard, the, yeah. the middle of something painful or difficult, uh, that maybe they, like your mom and like you, like us, need to just cling and hold on to the Prince of Peace. Maybe it's a different name. Maybe it's Everlasting Father. Maybe it's one of the yeah. other names, but maybe it's Prince of Peace. And they just want to cling to those words and that name in this season. What would be your direct encouragement? Yeah, well, I think if you look at like the prophet Isaiah, when he says it, number one, he says this promise and then there's the season of waiting. So it's yeah. remembering there's there's a promise and it will come to fruition. It just might not be on our timing. Yeah. It might look different. And then the second thing is that it will look different. It it almost always does. It's yeah. not how we can, we can't quite fathom what God's doing. And even though we have the Bible, even though we have like a handbook of for how God works and his, like the way that Jesus did things and the things that he would do and how he flipped it and he was, about peace and reconciliation and you know grace and mercy we still we still miss it yeah. we still get it wrong yeah. so it's it's going to look different sometimes so number 1 the promise comes and you might have to wait number 2 it might look different yeah. um 
And lastly, I think I look back now from my vantage point, 11 years, right? From my mom, like just to bring it to my personal perspective of this Prince of Peace. And, you know, losing my mom was the most, she was as big of a person as it could have been in my life to mm. lose. Yeah. Um, the most impactful, the person that loved me the most, my sounding board, my home base. Spoke with her every day of your life. Every day. So the thought of losing her at that time was more than my physical body could withstand. But when I look back from this vantage point backwards, I can see the people that he's placed in my life and that he is always providing me with different and unique ways of showing me that I'm loved and I'm cared for. And I still, I might not have my earthly mom, but I have these beautiful women that step in and they get to be fill-ins. And I think mm. the unique thing that I see in that is they don't have to love me. They love me because they're called to love me or because it's just the way that Jesus designed it, right? Mm. Like, And it's even more special and unique. And I, it brings me so much peace knowing that I have a heavenly father that's going to take care of me and provide for me. So the peace looks different. It looks different than I would want, right? I would want my mom here. I would want my mom to be a grandma. But I get the other side. I'll see that in heaven. And yeah. I get the peace of knowing that he's going to provide for me. Yeah. And we have that little peace that word hanging still yeah. up in our house. And we need those reminders. We need those affirmations. Yeah. And uh, sometimes little things like that go a long way to remind us uh, that even in the midst of the darkness, that light is coming, even in the midst of hopelessness, that hope is out there, even in the midst of chaos, yeah. peace is possible. And we just keep looking for it. Yep. Thanks for doing this. Yes. Thanks for always being so willing to share your heart and uh, it's a privilege to do this journey with you. Likewise, I love, you're my little physical expression of Prince of Peace. I One of the things I love about you is that you're so steady and calm. And so I appreciate how you are always pointing me to peace and living a peaceful life. So thank you for being on this journey with me too. Thanks, Helen.